welcome to the Enchantress Society with Tia Johnson, a place where you get to be you, where you get to unlock your magic in a sacred and judgment-free zone. The Enchantress Society is your witchy sisterhood of enchanting women who guides and supports you along your spiritual journey from the mundane to the magical. I invite you to sit for a spell as I interview guests and spill the spiritual tea on how we can create the magical life we deserve. Hello, Enchantress, and welcome to part three of the Summer Sex Goddess series. We will be working with goddesses Lilith and Aphrodite. So, as a quick recap, if you are new to this series, if someone sent you the link to this and this is your first time listening to this series, this is your first episode, this series is based off of research. Uh, my project manager sent me a bunch of data and uh, I took that data and posted a poll on my Instagram stories and I had people vote, which would be the next series and Summer Sex Goddess won. Okay, so get connected with me on Instagram because this is where your voice can be heard the most and the quickest (laughs) because I'm there. All right, so I can continue to bring you content that you want. All right. So there was a lot of uh, data around sex, uh, sex magic, sex goddesses, uh, working with the the seasons, the cycles, all that. So that's how we came together for this summer sex goddess series. Also, there was a lot of questions about Lilith and Aphrodite. All right, so this is why we are working with them. This is purely off of data. All right. It's interesting, too, that Lilith and Aphrodite would pop up in this circulation of sex goddess and lust and pleasure and all that. Because these two goddesses will definitely help you in those areas. And when I was writing uh, my notes for this episode, I was thinking, I wish I could further ask questions with the people who were, you know, looking up things on my website to ask them, did Lilith appear to you? Were you just drawn to Aphrodite? Did you have a dream? What was it that made you choose these goddesses or maybe those goddesses chose you because there are so many ways to look at this and there are so many goddesses to work with regarding these things so that would be my one thing is why little and aphrodite from your perspective so interesting so let's get into this i talked about little and aphrodite in my first book And I have some messages and prayers that I channeled and so forth to really help you understand who they are. So to invoke them, to ask for their blessings and so forth, we're going to learn a little bit about them. So even if you know about Lilith and Aphrodite, just hang tight. (laughs) Okay, bear with me. And we're going to get into working with them for our uh, sex magic and so forth. So Lilith, in my first book, I discuss some of her symbols and what uh, other things she is associated with. So she is associated with the wind, great strength, sexuality. Uh, She dates back to Samaria, uh, so ancient Hebrew uh, times. And some of her symbols include the owl, snake, Uh, the dark moon, the new moon. And when you look up Lilith, you will see some of the the terms associated with her are demon goddess. Here's the thing. She's been demonized. 
And the energy she was on was like, okay, since you want to do that, I'm going to play this game and I'm going to live up to it. I see what you're doing and I raise you one. I'm going to own it. Not live up to how you want to de- demonize me. I'm going to own my independence and let's see what happens. Okay. So this is why I encourage people to dig deeper because sometimes on the surface, when you see things, you go, oh my gosh, I, I don't know if I want to deal with her. Oh my gosh. She, she looks like what? Mm-mm. Dig a little deeper. Imagine if you were dating someone and they wanted you to be submissive. They wanted you to be beneath them. They didn't give you a space and grace to feel comfortable, to feel protected, to feel supported. They just want what they want from you. And your response is, um, no, (laughs) we're equals. Okay. There are going to be times where I'm the alpha person and you're not. And then there will be times where you're the alpha person and I'm not. You take the will sometimes. I take the will sometimes. But you can't always have the will. Okay? That's what happened. (laughs) Adam wanted her to be submissive, to be subordinate, and she just wasn't having it. All right? Also... And you'll see several stories of this in the the Garden of Eden. The snake appears to Eve, right? So, you know, God makes Eve from the womb of Adam, right? A snake appears as a, a tempt, right? Tempting, a trickster in a way, a temptress, because the snake is, is a female. It's a form of Lilith and, you know, encourages her to eat from this tree and this succulent red apple, right? Now, the story we were told was that the snake was evil and, you know, they became ashamed and they had to put on clothes. Stories I'm reading are basically Lilith is saying, hey, Eve, hey, listen, you don't have to be subordinate. Take this bite out of this apple and apple and see the truth. Embrace in this pleasure. Embrace in this knowledge, right? It's not to put down the man, of course not. It's about understanding that, again, There's going to be some give and take. There's going to be that giving, receiving. One person is not above the other. And so some people can't have that. What? A woman who is independent, she sees herself as equal. She wants respect. She gives respect. She's passionate, full of pleasure, full of sexual energy. That's dangerous. So she became demonized, but she's actually a very sexy, very in tune goddess. She's the one that's going to keep that same energy. You know how we have friends that will go, oh, you know, let it go. It's not worth it. She's the, no, no, no. Let's call them out. Let's see where this goes because someone needs to let them know. Actually, I I just heard Scorpio energy, like let it sting. Let's, Let's play this game and I'm going to win. All right. So that's that's a brief, very condensed story of Lilith. Okay. And again, I encourage you to read more about Lilith. Next is Aphrodite. Now, many people know her as a Grecian goddess of love, romance, and she's almost uh, depicted as this person who is just vain and just wants to focus on beauty and pleasure. But really, she is a a force, okay? Sometimes when people see a goddess of love, they think, oh, dainty and flowy dresses and things like that. Love comes in many forms. 
So if Aphrodite appeared to you with blonde hair or brown hair or black hair, whatever, that's just her being expressive in her various forms. And she's appearing to you naked or, you know, dressed up in some ocean themed outfit, whatever the case may be, understand that is the different emotions. It's that passion, that energy at the time that's being expressive through how she's choosing to show up. It's just like when you are in the mood to change your hair color. It doesn't mean you're no longer who you are. You're just feeling black, like a nice black hair color that's just luscious and beautiful and shiny. Or maybe you're thinking a little bit of highlights, like sun kiss, okay? That's all part of the makeup of expression, beauty, okay? And that's what Aphrodite also brings to the table. So she actually uh, is, and, and when I was reading this, it was quite interesting. So as I was saying, many of us know her as a Grecian goddess, but actually she is more of the uh, Eastern, as it states here, Eastern Mediterranean uh, that was established off the island. So her history dates back before actually being part of the Grecian pantheon. So little, little, little known back there. It's just interesting to just hear these things because it just goes so deep is what I'm saying is it's the history that we learn and then it's history that we uncover. And then we see how all these goddesses are connected and multifaceted from source. All right. So I just wanted to just throw that in there. Okay. Working with uh, Aphrodite also is about being in tune to yourself. So you may be drawn to water. She is associated with the oceans and just even the, the the foam that you see in the sea, those little bubbles and stuff like that. So get in tune with the ebb and flow and you'll see how graceful and seductive you'll become. And you might think, oh, well, mm, I don't know if I want to be seductive. Here's the thing. You don't know what turns some people on, what ignites people about you. The example I gave in a previous episode was you can walk out in sweatpants, a messy bun, and someone would find that attractive because to them, you look like someone who's comfortable. You don't care. You have something to take care of, and you're out there. And someone could find that attractive. Someone might think, oh, you know what? You may not see that as seduction and, you know, just kind of luring people in, but it's attracting people still because it's your essence. So just a little, you know, condensed history about Aphrodite is, is just that. It's that seduction that, you know, getting into yourself, okay, Allowing yourself to even worship yourself to a certain extent, okay? Not so much so that you're just (laughs) not uh, taking care of anything else, but just honoring yourself, okay? So she is all about sea voyages, um, just really getting in tune to the mystery, the adventure. And some of her symbols include seashells, golden apples. And it's funny because Lilith, uh, one of her symbols is a red apple. Okay. The mirror, uh, triangle, doves, dolphins, swans. Okay. And I encourage you to read more about Aphrodite and Lilith. I also pull some Oracle cards because I wanted to get more insight into working with them. And what we can focus on, because that's what we're going to uh, work on next is invoking them, what to expect, and so forth. So now that we know a little bit about both of them, the card that I pulled, and I asked for pathways, I asked for a, a guidance to understand. 
For Lilith, I have the spirit whisperer, divine guidance, higher knowing. And there's a woman here. Uh, she's in her, she's all green. Like the background's green. Her skin's green, has a green hue to it. There's an owl in the background. That reminds me of Hedwig from Harry Potter. There's a butterfly, some bubbles. She's just in tune. The message from Lilith with this is to hear, to listen, to feel, because a lot of times the messages we we receive are just that, a whisper. And when I'm getting a picture of a red flag, and when we are engaging with people, whether it's dating or otherwise, we have to listen to that whisper that he's not good for you. She's not going to be a good business partner. They aren't for you. And sometimes because people have a great facade, we ignore those red flags. We ignore that whisper. And then we relinquish our power. Next thing you know, you are in a tumultuous relationship. Next thing you know, you're trying to get out of a business arrangement. Next thing you know, you're trying to get yourself out of a sabotage. So start listening to yourself because this is how you strengthen your independence and your personal power. You don't have to be able to prove everything right then and there. Just look at it like this. You're at a, an event and the guy is, he's cute. He's either right, he's decent. But there's something about him. You're not that into him. Maybe your friends are saying, girl, you need to give a guy a chance. But deep down inside, you're just like, mm, I'm not feeling it. I'm just not feeling it. Okay. And it's okay. You don't have to feel it. All right. And sometimes when we do that, people think, oh, you're picky. Oh, you want the six foot X amount of pounds and this and that. That's not always the case because you can have someone that checks the boxes, but the vibe can be off. They cannot be uh, someone who is self-aware. They may not be considerate. They may not have empathy. They may not want to be a family person. You don't know that, but your intuition spirit is whispering to you. So don't get involved in that. Don't waste your time. And some people may say, well, you can learn a lesson. You're learning a lesson right now by listening to your intuition. (laughs) Okay, so Lilith is saying here, divine guidance, higher knowing. The more you listen to yourself, not saying that you can't receive advice. At the end of the day, you have to make these calls for yourself. You can take the advice, you can analyze it, see if it applies to you. And at the end of the day, even if that advice looks good on paper, if your intuition radar meter, however you want to call it, is going off, go with that. Because there are things unseen that you are picking up because you're picking up on the vibe. There are a lot of, quote unquote, good people out there who do good work, but they're not decent on the inside, okay? There's a lot of people who they can donate and donate and donate, but personally, not good in relationships, personally, whatever. So be prepared to be the villain in someone's story. Be prepared for people to want to accept that story. Be prepared to walk away from certain situations, knowing that it can't be corrected, knowing that until the day that person dies, that's what they think of you and you can't change it. And it's not your job to change it. So if you're the bad guy, you're the demon in their story, and people want to believe it, let them. You can't change certain people's minds. You can only continue to live your truth 
And the more people see that, the more they can say, oh, man, maybe that person didn't tell the truth. If that group who they told the lies to decides to have an open mind, a change of heart, the, oh, you know, I am so sorry. I believe Johnny, because we've been friends for so long, I, 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 I didn't have a reason to question the things he said about you. And you may say, oh, you know, it's all right, you know. And then you go on about your business. It doesn't mean that you have to establish a friendship with them. It's just, uh, you know, shit happens. <laughs> okay. I can see how that happened. It's unfortunate that you didn't try to see the full story, but, you know, that tends to be the case because also that person may wanted to date Johnny. Okay. Johnny wasn't interested. Johnny was interested in you. So that person was more ready to believe that story or they just are friends and they just want to believe Johnny. So that's from, from Lilla. Okay. Next from Aphrodite. Oh, the prison wave, self-sabotage, poverty, consciousness. What Aphrodite is saying. Oh, so in, in this um, card, it's a woman and she has uh, a white dress on and she has wings. To her right side are prison bars, but behind her is an exit. So she's like in a cave, but it's open. All she has to do is turn around and walk away. So she's in a self-imposed prison. And uh, the message from Aphrodite here is for many, it's a self-imposed prison. But it's twofold because it's the programming that has happened since childhood. As I talked in the previous episodes about colors women shouldn't wear because only a certain type of woman wears those colors or what to wear or what you should do. Be the good girl. Be ladylike. There's nothing wrong with being ladylike, but we know it comes with those undertones of being the good girl. And we know the undertones of the good girl. Be successful, but not too successful. Some people don't don't want you to be successful. They want you at a much lower level. Not lower, not meaning that. I'm not saying lower as in uh, demeaning a job. Lower as in you don't get to make but so much money. I do. Lower as you don't get to make the connections. I get to make the connections. People who think, oh yeah, I made you. You wouldn't be here without me. Um, excuse me? You can't, no one can make someone become successful. You can help them, but no one can, quote unquote, make you. Okay, think about people who you want to bring with you to the top and they just aren't for it. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to go that extra mile. They want to take easy street all the time. You just can't. You can't make someone become successful who doesn't really truly want it. So I want you to remember that as well. When someone tries to tell you, I made you, you wouldn't be here without me. If they're saying stuff like that, they're trying to control you. As opposed to, oh, I'm so happy I can be part of your journey. Right? Two different tones. So. Breaking free from the self-sabotage of not wanting to receive pleasure or not too much pleasure. You ever experienced that? You hear people, oh, I, it's okay. I, I don't want dessert. I, I don't need it. Well, do you want dessert or are you just watching what you're eating for healthy reasons? Do you think you're being too much if you get dessert? I, a quote I saw on Instagram was great. It was... Uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, don't let people treat your standards as if you're asking for too much. Okay, the, the basic things like respect, consideration, <laughs> boundaries, empathy, 
communication, directness. Is someone acting like, oh, you talk too much. You always want to, you know, X, Y, Z. Okay, what? You can't respect boundaries. You can't do the simple things. Why is that too much? Okay. So with the poverty and the consciousness, it isn't always about money. Okay. This is about energy. This is about frequency. Stop holding yourself back from receiving. Start reframing how you talk to yourself and otherwise. So even if you're not feeling motivated, okay, this morning I was feeling a little like, eh, at the time this recording is the day before the full moon. So you know how that goes sometimes when a full moon's around, there's energy swirling. So what I did was I went back to the things that helped me get realigned. Of course, I felt the emotion first and to have that understanding of why I was feeling a little eh. I burned some incense, smelled the aroma. I had my window open, got the morning air, made me a cup of Nespresso, pulled some Oracle cards, had a talk, a little, little, um, how can I say this with spirit? A bit like, hey, man, like, all right, I need you to get clear on this. What's going on here? Okay, so a little intense conversation is what I'm looking for. All right, I had a little bit of a tense conversation, relaxed a little bit, and then I started to record. Okay, I didn't, oh, that is hilarious. Oh, my God, I just looked up at the time. Oh, I just happened to look up at my computer and I see the time and it's July 12th at 12, 11. So it's literally 7, 12, 12, 11. That is crazy. Great. Look at the numbers. Crazy. Um, wow. It's like literally mirroring, mirroring itself. 12, 12. And I can't deal with this. <laughs> so I didn't push myself to just record because I felt like I need to be on. I got to do this. The vibe wouldn't be there. And that's part of a prison that we put ourselves in. I got to be productive. I got to do this. I got it, got it, got it, got it. No. Sometimes you just slow down, get yourself together, ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? And when I looked into it for myself, is that I'm so filled with excitement and emotion about what's next that I can barely contain it. So when I woke up this morning, I was just like, ah, man, I wish it was here now because I'm just so excited. I don't know what it is, but it feels so good. I'm just like, what is it? What is this energy that I'm feeling? So it's like that, okay? But I knew not to push myself to feel, let it flow like ocean, okay? Flow. But we also know ocean can be dangerous if we don't respect it if we don't navigate it well. And yes, there are some unfortunate things that happen. Now I'm not talking about that. Things like that do happen. I'm talking about when you're just in there. Maybe you, you're at the beach and you want to get your feet wet, okay? You are just being conscious of how you're doing things. So sometimes you just have to turn around. Sometimes you just have to zoom out. I was having a conversation with someone yesterday about uh, (laughs) so-called advice people give or so-called constructive criticism. And this person said, why would I listen to them? I accomplish more in my lifetime right now than what they have. And I said, yeah, in like half their lifetime. And the person, correct me, no, a quarter of their lifetime. And that's not to put down the person. Everything is a case-by-case basis. So the person is someone who always wants to be in control, always want to tell people what to do. But they have not practiced what they preached. The rules apply to everyone else but them. They're the exception. Okay. 
they are the exception and they demand certain things and they just can't deal with other things. Okay. And they have to receive some form of credit for crappy results. You know, those people, they have to make a commotion to make it seem like they're doing so much more. Meanwhile, it's just simple. You're you're making it more than what it is. So that way you seem like you're doing more than what you're actually doing. But you also want to control everyone because you want to be a figurehead of what? So you have to zoom out. The person was not giving good advice, let alone advice that would uh, be per that person. They just wanted to just dispense what they think should work for that person. What they think that person should consider. It's like having a coach that just telling you, oh yeah, do X, Y, Z. And you're thinking, okay, well, that that's a blanket statement. That is, that, what? Okay, so you have to zoom out because that person could have been in a self-imposed prison because of what someone else told them they should do. And it doesn't apply. All right, so start zooming out. and start getting more into yourself. So work with Aphrodite to understand your beauty, your pleasure. Everyone doesn't have to understand or acknowledge your beauty, your pleasure. They're not for you. Okay. So that's the Oracle reading. Check in on your yourself sabotage. I matter of fact, I caught myself earlier today, just before this recording, uh, when I was feeling a little eh and I was working through it. And I thought, okay, I'm ready. And then I thought, oh, well, mm, let me check something on my phone real quick. And I heard, you're, you're sabotaging, go record. And I moved something on my computer, my computer froze. And then I heard, see, if you just record it, you wouldn't have to restart your computer. So again, it's going through those motions and understanding. And then I was able to record. I thought I had worked through it and I still had a little mm, there because I was just so, I'm ready for the next thing. It's like, wait a minute, but you can't skip what you, what you have to do right now. <laughs> All right. So I almost sabotaged myself into doing something else, which would have delayed the recording of this video or video podcast episode. All right. So always be aware, zoom out, look around, take it all in. And you can start with the next time you enter a room, just take it all in. Just do a quick, you know, eye scan, who's in there, what they're doing, what they're wearing, colors that are sticking out. All right. Become more aware, expand your consciousness Okay, start understanding the power of frequencies, and that will get you out of that poverty self sabotage framework. So, when it does creep up, you can catch it sooner. And you hear spirit whisper, like I was hearing earlier, those messages to help you get realigned. All right, now let's talk about invoking them and what to expect. So, I also talk about this in my first book, To Be Goddess. And it's in part three. First and foremost, get to know them. This is why I spent a little time talking about who they are, give you a brief background, some symbols associated with them and so forth. Because when we are working with uh, sex uh, magic, you know, sexual energy, or excuse me, performing sex magic, working with uh, than sexual energy, we need to know who we're working with, (laughs) okay? Just like anything else. Imagine if you just wanted someone and was like, hey, can you help me with this sex magic ritual? Someone may be like, "Uh, what? And some people may be like, okay. (laughs) Right, it's the luck of the draw. But what I'm saying here is you, you wanna get an understanding of what you are getting yourself into. I am not a practitioner who would say, oh, yeah, just go get a red candle for Lilith and get a white candle, maybe blue or pink for Aphrodite 
and, you know, just, just meditate on that candle or go buy a crystal. No, 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 no. Understand these goddesses. Okay. The more you read about them, the more you're going to learn about them. And again, I mentioned this in the previous episodes of this series, you're not going to know everything. Okay. You're not, you're going to read something that is going to tell you, uh, an even more ancient, um, symbol or origin, whatever the case may be, because people are constantly uncovering old texts, constantly, uh, bringing out the truth and things like that. So be open to new information as it presents itself and also be open to different ways of working with the goddesses. Okay. Because everyone has a different purpose. Everyone receives messages differently and work differently. Okay. As I mentioned before with, uh, you know, the kitchen witch, right? You may want to work with Lilith and Aphrodite in the kitchen and not in the bedroom. Okay. Or just by the ocean or at a bonfire for Lilith or by a cave by a mountain. Okay. So get to know them and get to understand how they want to work with you. And just by reading up on them, whether it's a blog post or look up YouTube videos, or even my, my book, other books, things will start to resonate with you. For example, I feel close to Lilith when I'm wearing a certain combination of red and black. So you will see me in some red and black blouses. Usually there is a flower there, a red flower, and uh, it's just a deep, dark red. So it's that combination on a blouse, on uh, a dress, what have you. I just feel connected to her with those colors, okay? And also with the snake, I just feel like snake equals Lilith, (laughs) okay? I, I even... I've even been considering getting a snake tattoo, like on my arm. So that's a a, a commitment. <laughs> All right, but it's been calling to me. And that's the thing. When it comes to tattoos, I take it seriously. So it takes me a while to pick a tattoo, pick a place on my body and so forth. So when I feel called to do this, I let it simmer, think about it. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to let it simmer think about it. You may want to wear different clothes. Okay. So before we get into what to expect, because that's what we're working towards. So invoking them first, like, like I was saying, get to know them, read, read up on them. So forth. Uh, next is to refer back to your sex magic style. Like I was saying, maybe you will bake a pie with fruit associated with Lilith, apple pie, or apple crisp, something like that. Um, same with Aphrodite. Maybe you'll use uh, more of a golden apple as opposed to a red apple. Okay. Uh, maybe you will do, there's um, there's a spell you can do where you, you slice the apple in fours, or you can slice the apple in half. You count it, you ask a question, you count the seeds, you ask a yes, no question, you count the seeds, And you can make this determination if odds can be yes, evens can be no, or evens can be yes, you know, you could reverse it, whatever. Ask a question about love, about romance, about pleasure, and see what happens, okay? And then eat the apple thinking about that, and then you can bury the seeds somewhere, all right? You can carry the seeds with you until you can, you know, in a little satchel until you get to the point where you feel like, okay, I I got it. I I understand what I need to do now. Okay. Just to keep that energy with you. Uh, Another thing you can do as far as invoking them is to perform sex magic on a particular day of the week. So uh, Lilith's day is Tuesday and Aphrodite's day is Friday along with Freya. Uh, And Friday is also known as Venus Day. Aphrodite is associated with Venus. So Friday is also her day. 
Of course, you do not have to solely work with them on Tuesday or Friday, but these are their power days. So imagine it being like a bonus, okay? It's like payday and then you get a bonus, okay? So in my book, here are some recommendations I give you. So regarding Lilith, again, this is about being conscious of what you want to focus on. And if you're not quite sure what to focus on, you're looking for direction, you can simply say that Lilith working with you for direction. Lilith, the guidance is needed and so forth. So here's what I have in my book. I have here focusing on stand in your belief, be an individual, because that's what needed. You have to stand for what you believe in on the spiritual path. It is not easy, but you've answered the call. So now and you have to see it through. So here you can, you can get a picture of Lilith or of a snake, a red apple. If you have an apple, use it. Um, I used to, back in the day, I had a printer <laughs> in my home. I used to print up pictures and have a little altar, okay? You can use uh, red or black candles. You uh, can invoke Lilith by singing into your sacred space. And I discussed how to create a sacred circle. And if you want to do something a little bit different, here's what I do for a sacred circle. I imagine uh, a ring of fire surrounding me, protecting me, because fire is my main element. I just, I love fire. I resonate with it. For you, it may be... uh, water you're just surrounded by water or air okay and i have here i invoke you goddess lilith into my sacred space to grant me the power to uphold my beliefs for my highest good and that's just to get you started and when i say highest good that means be prepared for some ish to go down right be prepared for you to have the energy the confidence to start to let things go. Be prepared for some people who've been around to exit stage left. Be prepared for things to start to wind down, not work the way they used to because it's coming to an end. And just as I was saying before, depending on your sex magic, You may want to add incense, music, take a shower beforehand, get in comfortable clothes, wear red and black, or maybe you've been called to wear green, a dark green color. Okay, so this can be as multi-layered as you want or as simple as you want. That's why I said earlier, I'm not going to say just light a candle and focus on it. No, call her forth, ask her, invite her to your sacred space. And you can have an apple for her. Pour wine, like a dark red wine. Merlot, I'm hearing Merlot, not Chardonnay, Merlot. (laughs) Maybe Chardonnay, I heard maybe Chardonnay, but Merlot. Okay, and have that as an offering. And we know there are many other offerings we can give to the goddesses, but as a start, see what works. Some olives, cheese, have that out, all right? Now, when it comes to Aphrodite, I have here focusing on accepting and receiving love, but you can have here accepting and receiving pleasure, accepting and receiving the beauty that's within, internal and external, accepting your beauty, embracing your beauty, and receiving the byproducts, if you will, of your beauty. If someone compliments you, it's okay. And, you know, say thank you. Someone wants to do something nice for you because they're just in awe of you. Say thank you. And of course, this comes with discernment, right? Like if someone wants to give you a drink, mm, you, you, you may want to say, ah, I'd rather see the bartender, you know, make it, right? So same thing, picture an Aphrodite or a pearls, a clam, an open clam, a dolphin. Uh, you can use pink, red, blue, white candles. 
and say, uh, I invoke you, Goddess Aphrodite, into my sacred space to grant me the ability to see the love that's already in my world, to attract more love into my world, and to be able to accept and receive love from a balanced state. And when I say balanced state, I mean just that center, all right? Because we do live in a bit of of a chaotic world, right? There's lots of things going on. There's multiple realities happening, but it's just about still being able to be in your center while witnessing destruction, creation, and, and everything in between, okay? So use those words and tweak it so that way it works for you. And that's how you can invoke them. You can invoke them by going on a bike ride, during a a, a a bike path and feel that wind, feel the air against your face, through your hair. That's one thing that I'm so glad <laughs> you're going to laugh. That's one thing I'm so glad uh, wigs have better technology now. When I used to wear my hair out, I used to love that feel of the wind going through your hair. You could feel it in your scalp, especially when you just got your hair done. And then when I switched to wigs, long story behind that, a lady just dyed my hair completely wrong and a majority of my hair fell out. So I started wearing wigs and I just couldn't feel the air anymore. And then the wigs got better and better and better. And now it's just so lovely. It's just like, ah, it feels so amazing. So, you know, you can connect with Lilith that way too. When I was at Dinner on Blanc AC, it was so windy and I just ended up dancing in the wind. I just celebrated it. And I'm even going to post, uh, well, at the time it's recording, the reel isn't up, but I will post it. There's a reel of me where there's a clip where I'm dancing in the wind. It's just whirlwind, hair flying, and I am just twirling about. So, you know, dance with it. When it's windy outside, go dance in it a little bit, okay? When you're out in the ocean or the pool, just Twirl around a little bit in it, in the pool, not the ocean. <laughs> all right. I don't want you to go drifting off and, you know, in those somewhere else. All right. I don't want anyone blaming Tia. Tia told me to go troll in the ocean. And now, you know, I'm in another country. <laughs> I just kept going. <laughs> uh, that may not be a bad thing. But anyway, so what I'm saying is there's more than one way to do this. But do it consciously. Draw a circle in the sand, a spiral circle, and say, Aphrodite, Aphrodite, Aphrodite. Okay, get creative. Think outside the box. This isn't just about sitting and meditating. That doesn't work for everyone. Okay? So dance. Have sex. Cook. All right? Go ride a bike. Go swimming. Whatever the case may be those uh, deprivation tanks to go float, <laughs> okay? Get reacquainted with the elements. I am huge on working with the elements. I have tattoos of the elements on me. To work with those elements will help you to be even more in, in, independent, in control of yourself, more aware. So when you're doing this during the summer, okay, you are taking advantage of peak level energy, okay? Peak level energy. That's what the summer brings, okay? Illumination, transformation, warmth, all right? Just that ability to rise and shine and listen. The next season is Leo. Hello? Take leadership. Be prideful. Show up and show out. It's okay to have your five minutes, your line light. It's okay. We all deserve that. Some people don't want to be put on the spot, and I understand that. But sometimes being too humble is a detriment, okay? So don't even toot your own horn. Blow that thing, okay? (laughs) All right. Put your works on display. Be proud of it. 
Be proud of how far you've come and shine. Let the world see. And whoever doesn't like it, again, they, they won't be part of your world. All right. But this is for you. So what you can expect is that it's going to be changes, changes to how you dress, changes to your posture, changes to your look. You may start to get your nails done. You may play with makeup. You may want to change your hair. You may want to get a tattoo. You may do an overhaul of your wardrobe. You may begin to be more selective about the events you go to and people you hang out with. You may be a little bit daring and go to that event to talk to people who you wouldn't normally talk to, to take that trip, to wear that outfit, to try that design, to be creative in that way, to post that post, to talk that talk, to create that thing. That's what's going to happen. And then in a blink of an eye, a year will go by and you won't realize it. You'll feel it at first and you look back and think, oh my gosh, where did the year go? Look how far I've come. I can't believe this. And you can't go back. Once you do this, it has to be something so wild, so crazy. You, you just, you can't go back. You're never the same. What you see, you can't unseen. What you do, you can't undo. That growth is what you desire. And it's down in the depths within you that's just waiting to come out. But you got to go to the depths to go get it. And many people are afraid to do that. And I'm asking you to fill it, but ask for backup. This is a one person journey. Your spirituality is a journey of you. This is your vision. This is your destiny. This is your journey. But you can ask for backup along the way. Goddesses, mentors, friends, those who truly want you to succeed no matter what, those who don't want to put a limitation on you, those that are okay with you being wildly successful because they understand that when you make it, you're happier, you're healthier, you're doing better. You're free. You're independent. You're in control of yourself. No one can tell you your needs, wants, and desires. And they win as well. No one should want to be in a, cir- in a circle where they're the only winner and everyone else is just existing. That's crazy. Okay. So expect changes and leave that room for mystery. There are some changes that you won't know about because you have to go through it in order for it to be rebuilt. And at the time, it's not meant for you to see because it's just too soon. It's too much too soon. So we have to look at this as building blocks and going more and more and more along the journey. I think about this often when I reflect on how far I've come. If I had known about the dark feminine five, 10 years ago, I would not have gone that route. I, I would just think mm, that's a little bit much. But with each step, the more I learn about the power of the divine feminine and everything that's under that umbrella, oh, hell yeah, I might rate. And I'm going to channel that into unlocking parts of myself reclaiming parts of myself, and I'm going to bring a few people with me. I'm not here for everyone, but I'm here for a few. And when I discovered so many smear campaigns done against women, the divine feminine, oh, I made it part of my mission to let people know. Men's training is not evil, bad is not a sin. The color red is not evil, bad is not a sin. There is no, ooh, creepy black magic. No, (laughs) okay? Things that have an appearance of being creepy are not actually bad and creepy, all right? There's symbolism behind that that we have to understand. There are people who receive bad raps because someone else didn't have the talent. They didn't have the skill. They didn't want to do the work. So they'd rather put someone else down to make themselves look better. And that's what happened with a lot of goddesses. 
People were too powerful. They couldn't control them. So they had to demonize. They had to also water down other goddesses. Aphrodite is not just light, airheaded goddess, just so absorbed with herself. She's a lover. She's going to have what she wants, but it's not... Uh, how can I say this? Not a. I'm, I'm just going to just have these people, you know, who love me and whatever. No, it's okay. So think of it like this: Not everyone wants to be in a hetero heterosexual monogamous relationship. Sometimes you want to be in a poly relationship, and you have to understand that what that entails. So you may read some books about it. Uh, listen to podcasts where people are being interviewed about how their poly, poly relationship works for them. Because maybe it's piquing your interest. It's a different type of love, a different type of romance, etc. Aphrodite is multifaceted. It's not just this singular beauty, singular love, singular romance. Okay. This is why I emphasize on debunking and reading and understanding how you work with goddesses. Because there are some gatekeepers. There are some things that should be gate kept, <laughs> right? Certain practices, all right? Because it's a cultural thing. You need to have that reverence and understanding. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who just want to control and just say, oh, this is a safe goddess. It's Aphrodite, right? It's fine. You know, Venus. Uh -huh. No. So we have here a goddess that's been watered down to be more acceptable and another goddess that's been demonized because she didn't want to be disrespected. So how are you being watered down and how are you being disrespected? Are you not being appreciated? OK. Are you not getting paid enough, not getting respected enough, not being valued enough? So now it's time to spruce up that resume and change jobs. You may even get a promotion in the midst of it, something that you didn't expect. And that's what I mean. So when people ask, what do I expect so much and then some? So much and then some. Another example, I was talking to someone and they were saying the things they wanted to call into their life. And the way it happened was very crazy. It was unorthodox. It was not in a way you would have expected it uh, to go down. And so it's not my story. So I'm not going to go into details. What I will say is this person manifested everything they wanted. It just came in the most unorthodox way, the most unpleasant way, but the person learned so much in the process, but they had to go through certain emotions and it took a while, but they still manifested so much in the process while they were figuring it out. And I'm bringing this up because when we are working on shifting our frequencies, our realities, because this is what we're doing here, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be going well in your life. You may not have the money you want in your bank account. You're not, you may not be in the ideal relationship you want. You may not be in the ideal job you want. You may not be in the ideal weight you want. It doesn't mean that your energy can't be top notch. It doesn't mean that you can't be on that frequency of love and abundance because that's how you work through it. And you start to look at things differently. I was talking to, oh, who was I? I forget who I was talking to. And I was, I mentioned how I knew when my money wounds were healed or money issues, concerns were healed. Because when I was reading about, uh, it was someone had made like X amount of money. And I, I used to think like, ah, oh, man, I can't wait for that to be me. Like, dang, I'm so looking forward to that. Not jealous. I'm just thinking, ah, oh, when's my turn? When will my ticket number be called by the universe, <laughs> right? Instead, I thought, oh, that's lovely. That felt real and normal for me. It felt like I was reading about myself because 
I knew the person and I just thought, oh, well, I must be next then. No longer, oh, when's my number going to be called? It's, oh, I'm next. It's here. That felt good. Luxury? Yeah. I just started going on websites and just looking like, oh, yeah, that's $500. Not a problem. $1,000, not a problem. And it's not just about the, the money value attached to it. It's about that feeling of, I'll get there soon. I'll be there. It's waiting for me. It's waiting for me because money is readily available. It's always there. It's working through these things. And yes, there are some real life, tangible, systematic things in place that do hold people back. Yes, there are corrupt governments and so forth that hold their people back. Yes, not discounting that. What I'm saying is that it's all there. It's just these blocks that are in the way. So we have to work through that. And that calls for a lot from within. Okay? You hear those stories about people and they say, oh, I came from nothing. And, you know, I got up at 4 a.m. every day and I ran the track and I did this and I did that. That's what that person needed to do to get them to where they're at. And now they're a multimillionaire. For you, it may be getting up at 8 a.m. and doing X, Y, Z for X amount of years. And you hear these stories. It took so-and-so 14 years. It took so-and-so 12 years. It took so-and-so eight years. Sometimes it takes people two years, but they had to maintain it. The quicker you become successful, the quicker you need to maintain that because you have to be in the right mental framework. So when success is delayed, you have more time to work on a framework. So you are more equipped to make it stay and maintain it, right? So you have to have people around you that support system to help you with that. So when you do get that success quick, you got to keep it because with easy come can easily go, right? If you're not paying attention, right? Money goes here, there, and there. You're paying for this. You're paying for that. Before you know it, it's like, oh, oh. but money is re, re, uh, replenished. It can be replenished. It's energy. So you can have some things not work for you right now, may not be in the right place right now. But work on your mind. Hence the prison wave. It's not all pretty. One side's not pretty. Turn around. Go on a journey to make all sides better. And you'll be better equipped to handle other things. Okay? So start looking into that. How can I work on my mental state? to be more receptive to beauty, pleasure, and so forth. Go on YouTube and look up nervous system meditations to calm your nervous system, to get into that space of feeling safe and comfortable. I have alarms set on my phone titled, uh, it is safe for me to be seen, heard, wealthy. Set those alarms on your phone at random times. It doesn't have to be at 11, 11. Make it at 2.25 in the afternoon. It is safe for me to be seen and heard and wealthy, abundant, living a luxurious life. If the luxurious life is for you, you may want the the simple, non-luxurious, minimalist life. And that's cool. Whatever the case may be. But get into that framework. Because the energy is at an all-time high here. Okay, so that's summer energy. That fire energy. It's also masculine energy. Masculine energy, one of the, the, the things with that is it gives. Giving. Give yourself that pleasure. Give yourself that space and grace. Give yourself those daily sex magic practices. You owe it to yourself. Okay, so that's how you can work with goddesses Lilith and Aphrodite. Okay, you know who they are. You have the oracle reading here. They, uh, you know, listen, listen to spirit, listen to your intuition. All right, start to filter through that. Get yourself out of this self-imposed prison. I'm telling you, 
This is powerful stuff. Sex, sexual energy, sensuality, there's nothing bad with it. It's been demonized over the years to keep you separate from yourself. Okay? So learn about your body. Learn about your body. I even, I I learned just recently that after a certain age, women no longer have their eggs. I thought they were just there and, (laughs) you know, I knew that they dwindled down over the years, but I didn't know that at a certain point in time, it's just zip, nothing. So if you're looking to have kids and you're older, you may want to look into that, preserving that. Okay. So start learning more about your body. Get, get your blood work done, get your panel screening done, get your heart checked out, start learning more about you, your body, the inner, outer, what you need, even uh, see a dietitian. take tests to see the foods that work best with your body. I know for me, it's more of the Mediterranean foods that really work well with my body and other foods just uh, makes me feel sluggish and loaded and I just stop eating a lot of foods. Okay. And, and I, and I tell you, um, I went to, uh, uh, a get together and I had, uh, a bit of a heavy food I hadn't had in a while. And I didn't even realize it at the time. And that's what happened. Sometimes we're just in the mix. And I thought, Oh, I'll just eat this. You know, not a big deal. I felt sick. Literally. Like I, I just, I felt like I ate too much and, and I probably did, but also it was just, it was over and beyond and I did not feel well. And I felt like I had to vomit. It was crazy because I no longer eat those foods and some foods I don't eat as much. So when I ate a little bit too much of the one particular food, my body was just like, Tia, this is too much. You know, we, we haven't, you know, been eating this type of food in a very long time. So you'll see these changes and it's natural and you won't crave those foods anymore. It's just not on your radar anymore. And that's okay because you're evolving. It won't peak your interest. It's like certain people won't pick you, peak your interest. Certain events won't peak your interest. You won't have fear of missing out anymore. People will be fear of missing out on you. <laughs> that's why they don't want you to grow, right? So get to know them more. Channel them, work with them. You get to feel their energy. Lit up is, it's intense, but it's also very calming. Like imagine if you're with your spouse and I I just use guy, uh, you know, because that's, that's what I imagine. Like a guy who is powerful and strong, but yet calming and you feel secure in his arms, right? But you know, he's a great protector, too. So, you know, playing games, right? But you know, with you, he's patient, empathetic, calm, considerate, respectful. You know, that support, that protection. It's like that. It's intense energy, which is extraordinary energy, powerful energy. But there's a certain level of reassurance with that. It's like your big sister who got it going on, right? And she's like, girl, you got this. Let, let me let me take you on my wing. And Aphrodite's like, girl, if you don't wear that dress, who's going to say something? If they are, they're just intimidated. Why are they worried about you? You wearing that dress has no impact on them. And if their man or whomever is looking at you, they need to address their man. Right? So Aphrodite's just like, no, we can't wear this. Let's look at your closet. Let's look at, let's use a bath bomb. Let's, let's, let's do something with the hair. Let's, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's add some luxury here. Let's uh, get some silks. All right. We need, we need, we need this energy. We need, we need boss level energy. We need main character energy. We need all that. Okay. I'm sending you lots of love, many blessings. I am so here for you. I am so here for your growth, your independence, being reconnected with yourself, not taking shit from anyone, getting exclusive with your inner circle. I am so here for it. I am here for you season. I want to tune in to your show, your movie of life. I want to hear it. So please email me. All right. Let me know how this is going for you. Tia at tiamariejohnson.com. I would love to hear it because this is powerful. All right. (sighs) 
So I'm sending you blessings, lots of love. I'm rooting for you. Remember to be kind to yourself. And we are going to wrap this up in my birth month, August. Woo! It's going to be great. All right. The final episode, which sex goddess are you for the summer and beyond? Stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in, Magical One. Let's keep in touch. Join the VIP email list by going to tmariejohnson.com. And as always, I'm sending you lots of love, many blessings. I'm rooting for you. And remember to be kind to yourself. Until next time.